Good evening, sim racing fans, and welcome to LSR TV 2's inaugural broadcast tonight as we close off the back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back coverage for Friday night and kick off the sim racing coverage for Saturday, live from the virtual Texas Motor Speedway. It's the championship night of the Real Sim Racing Midnight Thunder Speedway Series. Alongside Andy Kessler and Gabriel Wood, I am Ben Kilcree. Cisco Scaramuza is in the production van tonight. Getting the picture that you see to you, Tyler Herr. Will join us also throughout the broadcast later this evening. Andy Kessler is finishing up uh, uh, one of our other broadcasts on the LSR TV mainstream. So Gabriel Wood is going to fill in for Andy just for a little bit. And Gabe, you took the LSR TV, what was it, a Silverado or a Tundra? I don't know what it was. Anyways, you took it for a couple laps a little bit earlier tonight around Texas Motor Speedway. What did you feel, and how do you think the race is going to be for these drivers? I'm already seeing them practice three, four, maybe even five lines coming into play in the turns. We're going to get his microphone fixed. Let's go ahead and take a look at the speed charts in qualifying the open qualifying format here in the thunder speedway series here in the rsr uh, rink chad coleman currently leads qualifying times with a 29.718 it's jd laird in third byron daly so far has excuse me jd laird is second byron daly so far has secured that third spot dan murray doy woods Round out the top five championship standings coming into tonight at Texas Motor Speedway. Has Chad Coleman on top of the point standings? He leads by 35 points over Cody Gibson. It's 42 points back to Jason Swan. Gibson or Swan both have a shot at the championship tonight if Coleman has a bad night. We'll talk a little bit about that. A little bit later on, Scott Simley is in fourth. He is 56 back. 84 back is Jason Pick. He is fifth. Steve Herring is 98 back. He sits sixth. Aaron Bennett is 101 points back. J.D. Laird is 117. Brian Harvey is 118 and 119 back is David Gibson. Tyler Herr going to be running around pit road and also going to be the spotter around the racetrack if we see something or if he sees something that we don't he's gonna let us know but Tyler what can we expect out of these guys tonight here in the trucks well this is gonna be a relatively short race just 81 laps around Texas Motor Speedway tonight which means pit stops are going to be limited but tires are gonna be very important for these guys going around this track here expect some tire fall off and Trucks moving all around the track, trying to find whatever grip they possibly can. Crucial point to point out before we take the green flag tonight. 50% fuel going to be added to the trucks before the race. So they're going to be running on a half tank, no matter how many pit stops they do. So you'll see these guys on pit road quite often throughout tonight. Many winners throughout this season. Way back in Talladega, race number one, Cody Gibson grabbed the checkered flag and gateway it was jd laird he doubled it the next weekend he won at fontana then we move on to race four where daniel everhart picked up the victory race five at chicago it was chad coleman our points leader heading into tonight at pocono adam benefield got the job done back at daytona it was jason swan who's got a good shot at the championship tonight race eight at kentucky it was scott simley Race 9, Brian Macklin at Richmond at the short track at Homestead last weekend. It was Adam Benefield, and that leads us into the championship race tonight at Texas Motor Speedway. Checking in on the qualifying times, J.D. Laird. New fast time, 29.648. Byron Daly has bumped his way up to the second spot. Chad Coleman back to third for the points leader heading in to tonight. Now, if Coleman were to have a bad night, he comes in 35 points over Cody Gibson. Coleman's going to have to have a real bad night. Gibson or Swan 
is going to have to have their best run of the season in order to snag this championship away. By the way, champion tonight is going to leave with a free entry into the Outlaw Series coming up. It'll be on Wednesday night, so that'll be a good um, a good prize for our champion leaving this evening. Gabriel Wood, we'll see if he has found the plug for his microphone. He was a dryer. He was a guy who took our truck out for a spin a little bit earlier. Gabe, what can we expect? Well, early in the run, uh, I was able to run with both the high fuel and low fuel. Uh, on new tires, you could basically run full throttle just letting off just as you exit or get through the middle of the corner. And then natural progression of the tires, you're going to have to let off just a little bit more. The thing to watch out for during the race is exiting turn two and entering turn three. There's a few little small bumps exiting turn two, and that can upset the car. It, wasn't a, it was just a minor inconvenience. But going into three is the real problem. Uh, the car wants to get unsettled, and it will not turn on entry. So you're going to see a lot of guys with older tires struggling trying to get into turn three. 81 laps. Not a long race, but plenty of time to make your move. It's 121 miles here at Texas Motor Speedway. Gabe, do we see guys trying to get track position early on, or do we see the late race moves play into effect? Well, it's the end of the season. A lot of these guys, you know, I know the mentality. You know, if you're not racing for a championship, you're going to try and end the season on a good note, try and get it in, uh, try and get a good start on next year. Uh, Depending on the tire wear, after 20 laps, it wasn't that bad. But if the race goes longer, green flag, you may not see many guys take two tires, no tires. But if it's a 10, 15 lap run, you're going to see a lot of guys not pit, short pit, and just try and get in front of the faster guys. And the real show is going to be watching the leaders and the championship uh, front runners come up through the pack. It is going to be pretty fun to see qualifying just Getting set to come to a close here tonight at Texas Motor Speedway, and that's going to inch us oh so close to the drop of the green flag. Before you, before we head trackside, we'll urge you to follow us on Facebook. All you got to do is go to facebook.com forward slash live sim racing TV, or you can search LSR TV. That'll be an easier way for you to do it. You can visit our website at live sim racing.com. That's pretty much going to do it for our pre-race show here on LSR TV 2, the voice of sim racing. Now let's head trackside for our opening ceremonies national anthem tonight by Wesley Bryant.
Oh, on behalf of iRacing.com, Motorsports Simulations, and LSR TV 2, welcome to Texas Motor Speedway. It's Championship Night in the Midnight Thunder Ser Speedway Series here with RSR. It's the Texas 81, Ben Kilcrease, Andy Kessler, Gabriel Wood in the booth tonight. Tyler Hurd is going to be running around pit road and all around the racetrack spotting stuff for us. And Cisco Scaramuza is getting a picture that you see to you. Andy Kessler is finishing up with another broadcast on our mainstream channel. So I'm going to run you through at least the top ten and then we'll go from there. J.D. Laird has set the quick time tonight. He'll lead us to the green flag alongside Byron Daly. That is number 23 and number 20, excuse me, 35. That's row number one. Row two, Chad Coleman, he is in the six. Justin Laxton is in the 27 to his outside. The 79 is Joshua Chin. To the inside outside is five, Dan Murray. Aaron Bennett is in the 33. He'll roll off seventh inside of row number four to his outside. It is the number seven of Cody Gibson. Jordan Hightower is in the 22. He is inside of row number five. Danny Sanchez is to his outside in the 10th starting position, number 44. Scott Simley is in the 68. He's inside outside as Doy Woods in the number 91. Chad Cole is in the 13. Starting position, he's in the number 8. Steve Ritter is to his outside in the number 16 truck. Gabriel Wood, we're almost set for the green flag, so you're going to have to take Andy's spot until he makes it over here to Texas Motor Speedway. I'm looking forward to it. Championship night. We have three guys in the running, and we're about to drop the green flag. Oh, yeah, it's going to be a good night of racing. Hopefully Andy gets in here from his other broadcast because he's going to miss one heck of a start. He's, all these guys are going to be wanting to get as much as they can in the beginning of the race, trying not to wear out their tires early in the run. So the field begins to pace behind the American John Hood Cancer Organization Ford Mustang pace car. We'll go one lap, and then we'll set them loose for 81 laps, 121 miles you're at Texas Motor Speedway, the championship round, round 11 in the RSR Midnight Thunder Speedway Series. Again, real quick, point standings coming into tonight. Chad Coleman leads 35 back. It is Cody Gibson, 42 back. It is Jason Swan. Both those drivers have a shot at stealing the championship away from Chad Coleman. But Coleman does start inside of row number two. Going to be a hard task to do, but certainly is possible if Coleman gets into some trouble early on. Ben, final thought before Green, a real veteran of this series. He, I believe he's gotten the most wins in the RSR series, or the RSR Full Throttle Cup series. Chad Cole, he started 13th. It's going to be fun watching him come from the back. It's going to be a fun start. It's going to be a quick start. Lights out on the American Childhood Cancer Organization Ford Mustang pace car. He'll head down the pit road. It's championship night here at Texas Motor Speedway. To all the fans out there, happy Halloween. So far, so good. J.D. Laird out to an early lead. Chad Coleman. He'll go to second place in 35, Byron Daly. He started outside front row. He's in jeopardy of falling to fourth as Laxton looks low going to three. All right, you got a lot of these guys jockeying for position up front, in the middle, and near the rear. They're all, like I said, all wanting to try and get as much as they can. Once everybody's bunched up, once everybody's by themselves, you know, kind of single file run, it's going to be a lot harder to pass. You're going to have to use a lot more of your tires. It's just really not going to be worth it for the track position. So these guys try and get all they can. Daly falls back to fifth. Just as Chen is able to get around him in turn number four. Daly tried the outside. There's a truck sideways at the back of the field. Everybody so far so good as we complete lap two and begin work on three, almost three wide. Turn one down in the middle of the pack. It was uh, with the guy you said to watch out for. The A truck of Chad Golan just right in front of him was Simley and Woods. They were almost three wide going into turn number one. The top 10, though, has sorted it out single file for the most part here as we try to get into a rhythm at Texas Motor Speedway.
We continue to watch the battle right in front of Chad Cole. Woods works the outside in the 91. The 68 to his inside is Simley. We'll welcome Andy Kessler, who is dressed up as Kim Kardashian for Halloween. Kessler, how you doing? Scratch that. He doesn't have his headset on yet. <laughs> we'll introduce him here in a second. Woods falls back on the outside. Cole going to look to the inside of the Simley machine. Not able to do it. He'll battle side by side with Woods to the back straight away. You can see a lot of these guys taking advantage of iRacing's new update from, the, from about a month ago of the dynamic racing line. It's a, you know, kind of a moderately used track right now. And no real lines showing up right now. Uh, uh, Woods trying to work that outside lane. It's almost working for him. He just can't get the run off the corner. And I tell you another guy who's really starting to work in that high groove. Look at Byron Daly. If we can get a shot of him. He's up by the wall almost in one. He gets it turned back low for the exit of turn number two, but watch him down in three and four. He'll be right around the rim of the speedway, and he gets a good run down the back stretch, going to the outside. Look at him right up by the wall. Going to get some pressure, but I think he's going to get the run off turn. No, he doesn't. 71, 79 car is going to get the run. He's going to be have the inside through the trial while going into one. It's Joshua Chin. He'll look to the inside. These guys have been battling for the past couple laps. Daly again. Uses the outside to his advantage. Down in turn one and two, he pinches Chin off down the back stretch. Clears him going into three. We'll see if Daly goes to the outside again or if he'll stick it low. He stays low this time by. And now top five back tail to nose. The battle is right behind him. Simley is to the inside of Sanchez and he is bringing Cole with him. Cole is latched on to the bumper of the 68. He is almost tandem drafting him around here at Texas Motor Speedway. Jack Cole's just using him as a pick. He's saying, hey, if you're going to pass him, I may as well just take advantage, tuck in right behind you. Cole up to 12th. He dropped back. Scratch that up to 11. He dropped back on the start, has worked his way back up. To 11th, he started 13th. He dropped outside of the top 15 on the start. Now he's back up to 11 and trying to work his way into the oh, top third 10. Place. Third place car on the wall, 27, Justin Lax, and he smacked the wall coming off two. Be afraid to see if he did any damage to that car. Laxton, Laxton got the wall, as did Hightower in the 22 right behind him. So you got to start to wonder as we're about 10 laps into this thing, if the tires are starting to fall off and these guys are starting to get a little greasy on corner exits, starting to slide up the racetrack. 27, Laxton in the wall again. This time he'll lose the third spot to Daly. He'll lose the fourth spot to Chin, and he'll fall in line fifth at the exit of turn number four. Laxton has beaten the right side of that truck, and now he is in jeopardy of losing the top five spot. He has worked so hard to keep by, uh, to Dan Murray in the five. I think after that first hit, that car is just not wanting to turn. Now, it's it's a difficult thing. You know, I don't know if this uh, this series uses resets or not. If they don't, he's going to be in trouble uh, for the rest of the race. A little further back, got some two-by-two two racing. Richard Beasley getting around Danny Sanchez. Jordan Hightower getting around Dwayne Vincent. Excuse me, Vincent is getting around Hightower. Hightower is going to lose another spot to the 31 of Beasley, and he's in jeopardy of losing another spot to Sanchez. That'll be three in one lap if Sanchez is able to get around him. Just in front of those guys. Laxton is up the racetrack. Chad Cole is to the inside of Simley in turn number four. Cole is on the move. How heartbreaking for Justin Laxton having a third place run early in the race. Five laps later, you're battling outside the top five. It shows you why we race to the checkered flag and not to lap 10. Anything can happen in one of these races as Cole was almost in the middle of a three-wide situation going down into turn number three. He continues to battle side-by-side side with a 68 of Simley. Meanwhile, Laxton continuing to drop like a rock early on 
here at Texas Motor Speedway. We complete lap 13 and begin work on 14. Yeah, down the back straightaway, Dwayne Woods, yeah, he, he got brave there for just a second, thought better of it, saved everybody's race. While we were watching that, Chad Coleman has worked his way around J.D. Laird and has snagged the lead away from him here on lap number 14. New leader, Chad Coleman, points leader heading into tonight. He wants to end this thing on a high note with a win at Texas Motor Speedway, and he wants to secure that championship as he continues to ease out ahead of Laird down the back straightaway into turn number three. Then you go a little bit further back to Byron Daly in the 35, who was trying to work the outside. Caution is out. And it's a multi-truck accident on the back straightaway. It was a 12 truck of Joy Gatina. Gatina spun it down the racetrack and then impiled the other competitors bad break for Jason Pick who was just trying to avoid the crash and the 53 trunk had nowhere to go but into the spinning trunk right in front of it that'll put us under our first caution here tonight championship night here at Texas Motor Speedway we've got 16 laps on the tires and 16 laps on that fuel tank Tyler Hurd the field is heading towards you here comes all the leaders, the entire field coming down pit road. Expect everyone, oh trouble, the 16 spinning on the entrance of pit road. But everyone else coming down single file. Here comes Chad Coleman coming into his pit stall and right in. They're going to lift the right sides up. Looks like most everybody's going to take the same strategy. Four tires and fuel. Oh, two. Two tires out of Byron Daly. And the race to the line looks like the six beat the 23. Byron Daly. Going to roll the dice early on. Best time to do it is this early in the race so you can have time to rebound if it goes haywire. But Daly going to take the two tires. He'll be leading us back to the American Ethanol green flag as he catches up to the rear bumper of the American Childhood Cancer Organization Ford Mustang pace car. You're watching LSR TV 2, the voice of sim racing. We'll be right back with, uh, with the RSR Midnight Thunder Speedway Series Championship Night from Texas. Welcome back to the Texas 81, the championship night here in the RSR Midnight Thunder Speedway Series. Kim Card, I mean, uh, Andy Kessler has joined us. 
In the booth. <laughs> Glad yes, to I, see you're in costume. I got my wide load right up here. <laughs> just in time. <laughs> Lights out on the Childhood American Cancer Organization Ford Mustang Pace Car. Andy, this is going to be your third race in a row tonight. That's right, and we'll continue the trend back to back to back is what it is for me tonight. And uh, looking forward to it. I love it. Uh, the truck said Texas can't get any can't get any better than this, honestly. Well, I'll catch you up, and I'll catch the viewers at home up if they're just tuning in. Lap 19, we're getting set for our first restart of the night. Byron Daly just took two tires under this round of pit stops under caution just before uh, the caution flew chad coleman snagged the lead away from jd laird laird on back from coleman uh chin you keep going everybody has four tires byron taylor the only truck with two and he's going to be restarting out in front of the field the american childhood cancer organization ford mustang pace car heads down to the pit road We'll try it again. Lap 19, we go to 20 at the line. Green flag. That was a good jump right there by the 35 of Byron Daly. Got ahead of these guys by about three car lengths now. Here comes the six, though. He's going to battle for that second spot. He's going to take it away. And now here comes the 79 of Joshua Chin. He's going to make quick work of J.D. Laird. Down the back straightaway, J.D. Laird is going to keep a nose there on the outside, kind of take that outside lane. Not going to have anything for him. It's now single file, the top five. Now Laird did not get going on that restart. He's in jeopardy of losing that fourth spot to the front straightaway because here comes Dan Murray in the five, and he looks pretty hungry as they go down into turn number one. Top five is tail to nose, but behind them, it looks like we're at Talladega or Daytona. Yeah, it does. That's Cody Gibson on the outside right there. He's battling hard with Scott Simley. That's a great battle right there for that sixth spot on track side by side right behind these guys also nobody giving an inch right now off of turn number four but it looks like the 68 of scott simley is going to win that battle you know a lot of these guys with byron daly taking two tires a lot of these guys they're going to take a mental note of that no matter where you are on the racetrack how is he going to do with these uh two tires against all of our four tires that's going to come down to the end of the race on the final pit stop we've seen it many times before two tires is going to be good on the short run, it's if we get into a long run. How well are they going to stack up against the four tires? You see Laird up in three and four, experimenting with that top side. We've seen Daly up there, and we've even seen a couple of our other guys mid-pack able to make some passes and make that outside work. Daly up to the high side. We see him do this every lap. Swings down to the bottom in turn number one. But Chad Coleman is all over his rear bumper right there on his spoiler. He's going to be looking for the lead in a lap or two. Yeah, he is. And this is where you're going to see the four tires probably kick in for Chad Coleman. Coleman now. Oh, oh he gets the apron. Gets he a hits little the apron. Loose. Come on. Able to hang on to it right there. But he's going to lose two, three spots now as they head back into turn number one. And Byron Daly Make takes it. a sigh of relief for a minute. Yeah. For, for a second, yeah. Chad Coleman, good save for the points leader. Coming in to tonight, he'll try to regain. Joshua Chin to the inside of J.D. Laird. That'll be a battle for the second. Laird able to work the outside. He's going to pitch down Chin off turn number four. Good battle for that second spot. As they battle, they continue to chase down your leader, Byron Daly. Yeah, Daly's lead really starting to shrink right now as J.D. Laird Gets a good run into turn number one, off turn number two. Going to carry the momentum down the back stretch. Has a little help. You talk about these trucks. We're not at Daytona or Talladega, but the draft definitely comes into effect at these mile and a half tracks with the with the trucks. And right now, it's not working so well for JD Laird. He pushes up the track. You're going to leave the bottom side open. Here comes Chin now. He's going to see a little bit of a gap. Can't make anything happen back into one. And Gabriel, I don't know if he's pushing up the racetrack or if he wants to run that outside in three and four we've seen him he's able to hold off a challenge from the inside caution flag for the second time here tonight at texas motor speedway it's gonna be the 44 of sanchez oh that was weird maybe a Maybe a tire on the 44. Right. 
He never spun. He just I, went into turn one. It didn't turn. Gabe, what do you think happened? Uh, with the whoa, with the way he's sitting, it looks like his brakes locked up. Like maybe equipment failure. Because I've had that happen to me. Pedals so are coming very unplugged. strange. Yeah, very strange occurrence. To bring out caution number two, couldn't have come at a better time for leader Byron Daly, who is just starting. To get reeled in by J.D. Laird. Uh, Laird was really starting to chomp away at his back bumper. Now, we haven't been out that long on this set of tires, but I'm pretty sure we'll see an interesting shakeup here. Who comes down? Looks like everybody's going to be coming down. Heading towards you, Tyler. Everyone's coming down pit road, it looks like. And we're going to see if anyone else is going to try two tires or if Byron Daly is going to go with four this time round. Some of the guys in the back start pulling down onto pit road, looking at your leader, Byron Daly. He pulls into his pit stall. So far, right sides are coming up. Everyone's getting their tanks full of fuel. Byron Daly still sticking to the two tire strategy along with the 23, the 6 and Joshua Chin. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to agree on with that one, Andy. Uh, if I was <laughs> daily, I would have had to take the four there. Yeah, that would have been the time. And definitely, uh, when you're under caution, I mean, you got to take advantage of it. I know a lot of these guys taking the two tires because they saw how well he was able to stay up front and stay ahead of these guys for that little stint right there, about 10 laps or so we had. So, uh, the two tires did work for a short period of time, so you knew he he knew a bunch of guys behind him were going to try that, take that attempt, and uh, and of course a few of them did. So uh, again, they decided to take two to kind of stay out in front and take that track position. But those left side tires are definitely going to start getting eaten up here, uh, especially here at Texas. I might not agree with him, but that may be the same reason why I'm calling the race and not actually <laughs> racing yeah, exactly. in the race. Our coverage of tonight's Texas 81 with the RSR Midnight Thunder Speedway Series is made possible by the folks at Inside Sim Racing TV. For the latest and greatest in news and reviews in sim racing world from PC to console and everything in between, ISR TV is your go-to stop. Through weekly shows and our website, Inside Sim Racing is dedicated to the world of simulated racing. Visit them at isrtv.com and check out the show, their blog, forms and much more they are proud partners of lsr tv you know with these first two rows taking two tires yeah you know, maybe byron daly has a little bit of a cushion uh, you could see eh, who was who was that the first car on four tires i believe i want to go with a 68 uh, yeah that's 68 uh, yep scott smiley the black black and red car the snap-on car See how quickly he, he's had some speed. He's been able to make passes. See how quickly, if he can make it up front. He'll restart fifth on this restart. And I can't get over Andy's costume <laughs> for Halloween. Oh, hey, it's, it's officially you gotta love Halloween, it. Ben. It is. You know? It is. I just wish I everyone else could see it. That's all. <laughs> We can paint. We can paint him a mental picture. That's about actually, it. Actually, actually, I don't think I want anybody else to see it. <laughs> I can Lights only out. I can only imagine our good Francisco Scaramuza sitting in the production van is uh, dressed up as Kanye. <laughs> oh boy. We're gonna get I'm back sure to the Cisco's action. Francisco's been wearing his Kanye outfit all week. <laughs> oh goodness. He even refers back to, to the as action. Kanye. Back to the action on the track. Lights out on the American Childhood Cancer Organization Ford Mustang Pace Car. Hey, it's after midnight. We're trying to keep ourselves awake, having a little bit of fun. These guys are about to get back to having fun as they stack them up two by two. It is Byron Daly, your leader, J.D. Laird. He will restart third, excuse me, second. Chad Coleman is third. Josh Chin. He is fourth, fifth is Scott Simley, Dan Murray is sixth, seventh is Doy Woods, eighth Dwayne Vincent, ninth to Chad Cole, and Aaron Bennett will restart in the tenth starting position. Pace car gonna get out of the way, head down to pit road field in the hands of Byron Daly. Green flag back in the air. We're racing again at Texas. 
pulls that same jump start again. Doesn't it's not the same result as this time. Uh, the 23 car gets a little bit better of a jump, but he's gonna pull out to about a one car length. Trouble at the back of the pack. The oh. O2 truck is around. Big crash down into turn number one. Pedro Mojica upside down at one point on his roof, barrel rolling down into turn number one. That's just trying to get everything you can on the restart and running out of room. That puts us under our third caution tonight here at Texas Motor Speedway. Almost looks like the 51 of Doug Manning just comes straight down on him, just turns him. He tries keeping him off the wall, but it just spins him back. He just loses control. So a very bad break for Pedro Mojica. As he makes hard contact with the wall, then barrel rolls a couple times before coming to rest at the bottom of turn number one and two. Well, third caution of the night. Not much happened there on that green flag run, so that'll give us a great time to pay some bills. We're going to head to a quick commercial break. You're watching LSR TV 2, the voice of sim racing. Simulated racing can be awesome, but can also be kind of a free-for-all. Interestingly, auto racing faced the same problem in its earlier days. Whether it was on the back roads, the beaches, or the city streets, the racing was fun. But there was always a certain level of chaos and danger, until some folks came along and put some order to all of this. Stuff like official racetracks, regulations about weight and equipment, and enforcement of standards. That's what gave us high-speed excitement, fast-paced action, and photo finishes. That's when racing became racing. The guys over at iRacing.com have made the same transformation in the world of sim racing. Sure, they've got the most accurate tracks and realistic cars out there, but that's just the start. See, iRacing analyzes the performance and results of each driver in every race. So you can be sure you're always placed in races where the competition will be tight, and that those reckless drivers who ruin it for us all are kept in the pits. Not to mention that with over 45,000 active members already in their vast community, you can find races day and night, so you can always get in on the action. You can even join a league of your favorite series. And since updates are always automatic, you don't have to worry about software and can focus on the track. Zip up your fire suit and check out iRacing.com. Welcome back to Texas Motor Speedway. LSR TV's coverage of the Texas 81 is presented tonight in part by Lions Club International. When it comes to beating challenges, Lions' response is simple. We serve with more than 1.4 million members in over 200 countries in hospital and senior centers in regions battered by natural disasters in schools and eyeglass recycling centers. Lions are doing community volunteer work, helping, leading, planning, and supporting. Because we're local, we can serve the unique needs of communities we live in. And because we're global, we can address the challenges and go beyond our borders. Go to BeALion.org to find out more. Proud partner of LSR TV, the voice of sim racing. Coming up tomorrow, the big triple header. Andy, I, I, you're not going to make it to the party tomorrow, are you? Uh, no, I'm out of the party. <laughs> out of the party enough the triple header tonight was enough for you got a lot of short track racing coming up to you or for you tomorrow on lsr tv it is the uh sarah league at five flag speedway the sarah fall brawl gonna be a lot of short track racing street stocks and you got some trunks and some super late models all tomorrow night right here on lsr tv gonna get kicked off right at five o'clock Yeah, and of course, Ben, uh, Sunday, another doubleheader, some late models and super late models for Sarah Fall Brawl to finish off the seven days of racing. Uh, quite a event they got over there. And then, of course, Monday, again with the RSR Full Throttle Cup Series, the chase continues there. And then again on Tuesday, the season opener of the iRacing Pro Series right here 
on LSR TV. So a huge week uh, coming up for the for the channel, and uh, hope everybody can tune in and make some time for tons and tons of racing. You want to be a part of it. Got a lot of special stuff planned. Lights out on the American Childhood Cancer Organization Ford Mustang Pace Car. Let's get back to the racing here at Texas Motor Speedway Field. Still in control of Daly and Laird. Pace car to pit road. Green flag back in the air. Laird, did he jump it? They're side by side going down into turn number one. They are, but Daly able to lead that, lead him at the stripe right there. He's going to pull away now. Here comes the six truck of Coleman to that second spot. J.D. Laird having some trouble on restarting on that outside lane. He's going to fall in line now in that third spot, but not without the rear view mirror full of Joshua Chin. Those guys going to battle at top three. Look at them behind in the mid pack area. They are tail to nose, door to door. Almost three wide at some points all around the 1.5 mile racetrack here at Texas Motor Speedway. Look at them again. They fan out going towards turn number one. Some great racing mid-pack. And Chad Coleman, he's not just trying to uh, win the championship. He's trying to dominate it. I expect a move on the uh, 35 car, or the 35 truck, excuse me, in the next few laps. I think he's going to get tired of running behind him. Remember, top four took two tires on this, on the pits on the caution before the last caution we didn't have a real green flag run on the last restart byron daly has not taken left side tires since lap 19 we're working on 38 right now we are we got a pretty good battle right here for that fifth spot there the number five truck dan murray is going to take that away from chin here comes the 13 of Dwayne vincent he's now into the picture got a big big battle right here a whole bunch of trucks all turning, turning it on right now off of turn four. Good race back there, but got to keep one eye on that battle and one eye on the battle up front. You might be cross-sided cross -sided before the end of the night because Byron Daly has a trunk full, full of Chad Coleman in the six, and he is bringing Laird with him. Those top three all tail to nose, and then we go back to the battle. Look at Woods. He steps out to the inside of the 33 of Bennett down in turn number four. He'll look to make that pass stick on the front stretch. He does make it stick. Now that opens the door for the eight of Chad Cole. He's going to go to the inside of Bennett. He's going to be door to door now heading into turn number one. They're side by side right behind him. Also the 31 of Richard Beasley. He's to the inside of the 41 of EJ O'Rourke. He's going to make that stick. Here comes the seven now with a great run. Cody Gibson, what a great job. All these guys right now. Big battle heading back into three. Some great racing. We ease up on the halfway point, and as we do as we cross the halfway point of today's race, it's now time for our iRacing Midway Race Break, brought to you by iRacing.com, the leader in motorsport simulation and the official sim racing partner of NASCAR. Let's run them through the top ten leading this race. Not by much is Byron Daly. You see the battle heating up for the lead right there. Chad Coleman sits second. Those positions might swap as they get to turn three. Third is J.D. Laird. Fourth is Dan Murray. Fifth is Joshua Chen. Running sixth right now is the 13 of Dwayne Vincent. Scott Simley sitting seventh. Eighth right now to Doy Woods. The ninth, or ninth place, excuse me, to Chad Cole. 33 of Aaron Bennett is going to round out your top ten. Three cautions so far in this race. Not many trucks tore up too bad. This has been your iRacing midway, midway race break. For more information on the wide variety of racing possibilities on the web, visit iRacing.com to sign up today. A little bit of swapping going on up for the lead, Andy. That's right. The 35 at Byron Daly looked back to the inside going into turn number three. Didn't have anything for Coleman. J.D. Laird now on the outside. He's still trying to make that outside line work. He's been doing that all night long, but here comes Chin now to the inside. The door's open. He's going to step a foot in there now as they race down the back straightaway, back into turn three. Great battle for second. Unbelievable race going on. Wow, the 68 just hopped up out of line there out of nowhere. That was simply, look at Woods. Start, he is really working his way through the field. Remember, most of these guys behind the top four have four tires. The top four running on only two from that last pit stop. Look at the 13 machine of Dwayne Vincent. He's sitting inside of Laird as they race to the back straightaway. Daly finally gets clear and singled out in the line. He's going to send his sights back on Coleman, who just got around him while we were in our midway race break. 
Yeah, and look at Chin now up to third. He's gotten around J.D. Laird. Dwayne Vincent, it looks like he slipped up a little bit, lost some momentum, fell back just a bit. He's got a little bit of help from Doy Woods now giving a push. Woods, though, going to look to the inside and in turn number one now. That's a battle right there for that fifth spot. Woods wants it. Dwayne doesn't want to give it up. They make contact right there. Still door to door, heading back into turn three. These are trucks we're allowed to beat and bang in these tough trucks. You see the lap traffic. Jason Pickey gets to the inside. Look how close they are. That is Woods and uh, the 13 of Vincent side by side, door to door. Unbelievable close racing for that fifth spot. Top four has pretty much got singled out. They hope that they continue to battle side by side behind them and give them a chance to get out ahead. Woods finally gets clear of the 13 of Vincent. Now that's going to put Vincent under fire from the 16 of Simley. It is Simley going to get a decent run. The five car truck also, Dan Murray. Looking to get into the mix here. Not going to happen. Just up front, though, Byron Daly looks like he's in there under a battle. He's door-to-door -door with Joshua Chin in the 79. Chin has the preferred line on the bottom side going into turn number one. Daly way up high. He can't arc it down to the bottom until now. Chin makes it by him. Move Chin up to second. Daly now going to fight back to the inside, heading to three. You know, oh, I haven't been able to say it for a while. A kill crease crossover. You know, at this point in the race, or at this point in the green flag run, I would have thought that top four, well, now here goes J.D. Laird, but I would have thought that top four would be way back, but <laughs> I guess it doesn't help that they've been the four fastest cars all night. You see the lead that Chad Coleman has developed out in front of this field as they battle fiercely behind. Woods has made his way up to third on the back stretch. He's not clear. But he could be by the time they get to turn number three. If anybody's going to have anything for Coleman, it's going to be from that 91 truck of Doy Woods. He tries to get the third spot off four. He's kind of got him clear. Maybe not quite yet. Got a little bit bumper right there. Chin still has a little bit. Down to the bottom goes Woods. He's going to have him clear now. Vincent now to the inside. He's going to try to take that spot away from Chin. That will move him up into that four spot. They're drag racing as it looks like Chin maybe... Tagged the wall there off of turn number two. Still able to stay in the throttle now. He's right ahead of him. Here goes Woods now, trying to take second away from Daly. On board with Joshua Chin now. As you see the battle for a second, heating up right in front of him. Woods is to the inside. Make it out in front of the 35. He does in turn one. Woods has cleared the pack and is now going to try and reel in Chad Coleman. Got a little bit of work ahead of him now, almost a second right now. But here comes Daly again. What a run off of turn two. Gives a little bump to Woods as they head back into three. That's going to slow him down. Here comes Vincent now to the inside. He wants that third spot. He's going to have the 23 truck now right behind him. J.D. Lear giving him a push down the front straightaway. That's a great battle for that third spot right now. Four trucks make it six for that spot into one. Are you sure we're still at Texas? I could swear we're at Talladega. The way these guys are racing side by side, door to door, tail to nose. Look at this. They get real tight off turn two to the back stretch. Daly and Laird side by side. They They're stack three up wide. three wide. That's a great battle right now. And if I daily up way up high to the high side, Chin falling all the way back to about an eighth spot right now. Here comes a 68, Scott Smiley. He's side by side with Daly. You can really see the four tires really taking over now. Daly probably wishing he did take the four. Right now, still falling back. He's on that high side. He tries to make the outside work. He gets a little bit of momentum, but here comes the 68. Smiley's going to clear. Here comes the 70, 79. A chin got a great run. The five now to the inside. Here comes the 31. They're all in it now. 13's moved up to second. Works his way around. Woods. Now he'll set his sights on Coleman, who is continuing to pull away from this field, even though they're singled out from second to third. Simley is up to fourth. He has cleared the pack. Dan Murray trying to clear the pack. They get tight again. The 31 almost spins. That's Richard Beasley. They're almost three wide again. They are. The six truck had, or the, yeah, the six, eight truck had nowhere to go right there. That's Chad Cole. He's going to make his way around the 79 of Joshua Chin. This is all a battle just inside the top 10 right now. Daly still falling back, though. The 31 of Beasley now to the inside of him is ahead back into turn number one. He's bringing Chad Cole along for the ride. What a race, and we've still got 
Probably another pit stop left. Not sure on how many laps these guys can get, but I'm pretty sure we'll see him duck down. He's still got just under 30 laps to go here in a championship race. So I'm just about positive we're going to see another pit stop as things somewhat start to get a little calm as they work their way out. All right, you, you know, you see a lot of these guys smacking the wall coming off turn two and coming off turn four. You know, it's very frustrating. You're racing. You want to get the best position you can. The, the tires just won't do it. And your first instinct is just let off the gas. That gets the nose light. You have no front bite. <laughs> You're just making it worse on yourself. It's a really frustrating thing. You just kind of have to do, uh, bite your tongue and deal with it. A lot of guys do it uh, better than others, but it's, it's just so frustrating. Wow, Andy, that, that's almost like saying uh, if you get into a fender bender, you just got to almost bite your tongue and deal with it. Yeah, exactly. Look at this battle right now. Daly still falling backwards. A 41. EJ O'Rourke, he's trying to take that 10th spot away from, or the 9th spot away from Daly. He does. He's going to bring the 4 truck. He's going to bring the 79. Now, Chin was all the way up in a second, just in a matter of about 10 laps or so. He finds himself outside the top 10. So trouble right there that for him and uh, probably a product of the two tires, I would imagine, as Daly continues to fall back on that high side. Here comes a 22 Pop. truck now. He's going to try to get around the 79 inch in. And Doy Woods gets into the wall, almost caused a collision on the back straightaway. Simley's going to be able to get by Woods. Here comes Murray. He's going to get by first round. Our first guy down pit road is J.D. Laird. It's the 23. He's going to bring, bring Byron Daly with them. Tyler Hurd, we see 4-2 on this round. J.D. Laird comes off the track, and from what I'm going to guess here, it seems like these guys are going to have to take four tires, especially the 35 of Byron Daly. He's been on the same left side tire since the drop of the green flag. Here they are in their pit stalls, 23 right sides up, fill full of fuel. Left sides up on both machines. They're going four tires on this round of stops. 23 beats a 35 off of pit road. Leader Chad Coleman down pit road. Surely we're going to see the same from him. Four tires. Seen a bunch of leaders now coming down onto pit road here, getting four tires and fuel. Oh, the 91 takes only two tires. That's Doy Woods. He's going to come out in front of Coleman. So that means uh, if. Uh, Yeah, yeah when, sorry, I was looking up the number. When the 91, he, he's the provisional leader if he could stay in front of Coleman. Andy, I, good call on the 91. We saw that he had a fast machine. Now all he has to do is just keep it out in front of Coleman, maybe put the block on him, and we could see Doy Woods head to victory lane here at Texas Motor Speedway. 21 laps remaining here in the Texas 81. As the field, the rest of the field comes on pit road, a bunch of oh, guys going to be... Oh, trouble off two. Oh, it looks, looks like the fork truck's got some trouble off of turn number two. He spun around. We stay green. It looks like uh, he's going to take the virtual tow to pit road and uh, keep this thing green. That's a good thing for a lot of those uh, front-running trucks that were now caught a lap down currently. So uh, a big break right there for a bunch of guys. That yeah. happened right in front of our points leader heading into tonight, Chad Coleman, and he was literally three inches away from seeing that championship go up and smoke on the back straight away. And a bunch of these guys were very lucky to escape problems there. A lot of these guys were lucky just not to have that caution. Jordan Hightower running inside the top 10. He has to head back down pit road to fast entering. That's not what you want on a green flag stop, Ben, is a problem on pit road. Uh, as uh, pit stops are starting to wind down, a couple more guys still left to come down on the track, but we're going to look at that 91 
truck of Doy Woods, uh, his crew deciding to go with the two tires on this green flag stop. It's going to give him a little bit of an advantage uh, time-wise over Chad Coleman. The problem is Chad Coleman is pretty fast also, and he's got four tires. So it'll be interesting to see right now. It's about a two-second gap separating these guys here, but the laps are still clicking down. I, I am That's so there. confused. I'm so confused right now because the 91 on two tires is, from what I can see, he's pulling away from the six car. This is just baffling to me. It's going to be interesting to see Woods gets the lead that time by. All the other competitors have made their round. Doy Woods is your new leader here at Texas Motor Speedway. Chad Coleman is on the hunt. He is on the move. It's going to come down to those two guys. If not those two, if they get to battling, here comes Scott Simley in the 68. He's got a uh, head full of steam heading towards the front. Then right behind him, Dan Murray is battling with Chad Cole. We watch that battle right now. They're nose to tail right there to five and the eight and then into turn number one. A little bit of separation as they enter the corner. A to Chad Cole trying to set up the exit, trying to get a run down the back straightaway. Not going to happen there. The five still hanging tough in that spot. That's the fifth spot on the track right now. So good job by all those guys. Joshua Chin able to rebound after that pit stop. He's running just behind those guys in that seventh spot. Oh, uh, oh, trouble. In the wall is the eight truck. Able to keep it straight. Able to keep it going. Losing momentum. The five truck loses it also. I think the two of them followed each other right into the wall. Chin is going to be the one that takes advantage of that. Give him two more spots. Put him in the top five. Ed Williams right. Jr. also got into the wall game. I was just about to comment on Ed Williams. It looked like they, somebody put a magnet on the tri-oval. Everybody just starts smacking the wall right around each other. Scott Simley, he came close to the wall out of the exit of turn number four. Simley trying to hold off E.J. O'Rourke, a name we haven't mentioned too much in this race. He sits fourth right now. 1.1 second. Seconds, the gap separating Woods and Coleman slowly but surely easing up on that 10 to go mark. Can Woods hang on and get this victory here tonight at Texas Motor Speedway? He's definitely a little bit slower right now than Chad Coleman. The problem is the laps are winding down now. We're down to 14 laps to go here. So uh, 14 laps, uh, one second now. The gap is uh, from the leader to second place, Chad Coleman, the points leader. Looking to close out the championship with another win on the season. So Coleman doing everything he possibly can. He's got him in his sights now as they enter turn number three. Off of turn number four, the gap is slowly closing up here, but so are the laps. You mentioned it. Laps ticking down. So is that time between the two. Coleman was three-tenths of a second faster the last time by, and you can visually see the gap begin to close as they work their way down into turn number three. Looks like Doyle Woods. Doyle Woods, sorry. Haven't, he uh, hit that bump I was talking about during the pre-race show, and it smacked him. He got him loose and smacked him right uh, into the wall. He's able to maintain the lead. I, I don't know how long he's going to be able to hold it. Woods trying to get his first win of the season. It'll be 11 laps to go this time by at the line, and Andy Coleman is just, he's there. He's too fast. Woods is going to put up a battle, but in the end, it's going to be Coleman. If we stay green, that I think is going to win the war. Yeah, it looks that way right now. His truck is faster right now. To the high side goes Woods. Coleman has that preferred line on the bottom. He's going to clear him off a of turn two. New leader. The championship leader, Chad Coleman, he's back up front. Well, you know what? With the race uh, Doy Woods has had and the season he's had, I think second place to the eventual champion, I think that's going to be a good way to go into the offseason. But like we say many times before, we got to race all the way to the checkered before we hand anybody a trophy and before we give out the prize money. Ten laps to go. Here at Texas Motor Speedway. Chad Coleman, your leader. Coming into tonight, he was the championship leader.
this is our championship night tonight here at Texas Motor Speedway in the RSR Midnight Thunder Speedway Series. Yeah, well, those guys are starting to separate themselves up front. We got a pretty good battle going on for that four spot. Joshua Chin has it, but EJ O'Rourke has been turning it on as of late. The last couple of laps, he's slowly closing them in. It's down to two car, two truck lengths now as they go through the corner. Coming off of turn number two, both of them, though, starting to catch up to that 68 of Scott Simley. Oh, oh in the wall is Chin right there. EJ O'Rourke, he's going to get around him. He's going to get that four spot. Maybe now he can catch up to Simley. Chen falls back into the line. Dwayne Vincent right there trying to capitalize on another position. He looks for the inside of Chen off turn number four. Vincent trying to work his way to the top five, possibly trying to work his way to the rear bumper of O'Rourke to get that fourth spot away. Yeah, what an amazing round of pit stops for Joshua Chen. You know, right before he smacked the wall, he was running fourth. I remember he was in the back half of the top 15 before pit stops. So I don't know what kind of strategy he called, but it, it worked for him. It did work for him, but right now, Vincent, he's making it work for him as he goes around E.J. Rourke off of turn number four. That's going to move him up to the fourth spot. Does he have time to catch that third spot, Scott Simley, and get in a podium position here tonight in the final race as the leader, Chad Coleman, still continues to pull away. It's almost two seconds now. Holy cow, did you see that slide job by Vincent off of turn number four as... Chen is in the wall again on the back straightaway. He loses another spot to Byron Daisley. Byron Daly. Richard Beasley is able to get by the 74 as well. So Chen, the handling has gone away on his machine here in the closing stages. Six laps to go. Six laps to go for your leader, Chad Coleman. Two second lead now. All Doy Woods can do is hang on to that second spot. He's got a pretty comfortable lead over Scott Simley. Skimley, Simley trying to hold on to that last podium position, but he's got a hungry truck right behind him, the 13 of Dwayne Vincent. He's trying to catch him off four. Five laps to go for Chad Coleman at the line. Five more circuits around. Texas Motor Speedway separates him from victory lane and a championship. Pretty much... If the caution were to fly, this race would be in the history books. Coleman has just got to make now four more clean circuits. And he'll have this one wrapped up. Doy Woods still holding on to that second spot. Simley slowly but surely reeling him in. Vincent is not going to give up. He wants to get that third spot away from the 68 machine. He wants that spot. He's coming off of turn number four. You can see that gap closing up quite a bit right now. The 68 assembly doing everything he can, everything that truck's got here in the closing laps, trying to hang on to that position, though. Here comes Vincent. He's still closing in off of turn four. Woods almost tagged the wall in turn number four. That's going to be a good battle shaping up all the way to the end of this one for that second spot. Simley is catching Woods. Vincent is catching Simley. This time by Chad Coleman down the back straightaway through three and four. He'll get the popsicle sticks two laps to go at the flag stand this time by as the battle is heated up for second. It is heated up into turn number three. Up to the high side goes Simley. He's going to pinch him. Vincent now looking at the bottom. They're going to go three wide off of turn oh. number four. What a move right there by Scott Simley. Move him up into that second spot. Doy Woods now, he's going to lose the third spot to Dwayne Vincent. Vincent now to the bottom. He's got him clear, so trouble for Doy Woods. The two tires just did not hold on enough for him in the end. What a pass by Simley there. This time by turn number four at the line. White flag for Chad Coleman. One more circuit around a mile and a half before we can crown him the champion and the winner of tonight's race that we can do the champion and the winner battle for second still heating up off of turn number two scott simley trying to hang on to a Dwayne vincent's gonna look low down the back straight away he's gonna have a run he possibly could get this second spot for the win he throws the block. Coleman off turn number four. Championship to Coleman. Win at Texas to Coleman as well. 
the battle for second. Gonna go all the way to the line. Simley snags it. And then another great battle for fourth. Right behind him, they're gonna crash after the line. But what a spectacular race all the way to the checkered flag here at Texas Motor Speedway. Chad Coleman, your winner tonight and your champion in the RSR Midnight Thunder Speedway Series. What a great race to end the season right there. Uh, great battles all over the track. We saw some of the best racing probably I've seen in a long time with these trucks here at Texas. And uh, these guys definitely put on a great show here tonight. And Coleman only had one other win this season. It was way back in race number five at Chicago. He puts it in victory lane here tonight at Texas Motor Speedway and will crown him the champion as well. We'll talk to him along with the rest of the podium finishers right after this. You're watching LSR TV 2, the voice of Sid Racing. Welcome back to Texas Motor Speedway. Another spectacular finish here in the RSR Midnight Thunder Speedway Series. We're going to talk to our podium finishers. Dwayne Vincent, he came home third. Second was Scott Simley and our winner, Chad Coleman. We're going to start by talking to Dwayne Vincent and Gabriel Wood has caught up with him. Gabe. Dwayne, great race out there. You came home with a third place finish to third place finish to end the year. Um, what do you what are your impressions on the uh, your final race of the year? It was a blast, man. Uh I think a lot of people took two um after that last green stop. Um came out uh, out of the top ten. I was like, dang, what the hell is going on here? But uh, started picking them off. But uh it, that was a lot of fun. It really was. 
Do you think if you had one more lap, you would have been able to pass Scott? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I was going to try. <laughs> so uh, are you going to stay in this series for the next season, or are you going to run the Outlaw Truck Series? Uh, we'll we'll run as many as we can in all the series, actually. Um, I enjoy running in RSR. Um, it's just that the schedule uh, and personal life and all that stuff works out. Oh, yeah, get to the racetrack when you can. <laughs> That's right. Uh, is there anybody you want to thank tonight for your run? Uh, I just uh, want to thank my son Cody for racing with us tonight, Cody Vincent. Uh, it was good to have him in there. I know he had some bad luck early, but uh, that was a lot of fun knowing that he was in the race. And uh, all you guys at all, uh, LSR TV and uh, everybody at RSR, we, we appreciate all the fun we can have. All right, well, again, great run. Oh. Now I think uh, we're going to talk to the guy who unfortunately beat you. Uh, yeah. That's right. I'm down here on pit road with Scott Simley. Scott, driver number 68, uh, two tire stop there at the end. Almost, almost uh, caught you there, but uh, Dwayne Vincent, uh, you were able to hold him off, get that second place finish. Uh, you got to be pretty excited about that in the season finale. Yeah, it was a lot of fun racing tonight. There's uh a lot of close racing, uh, racing EJ a lot and Dwayne and yeah, it was just a lot of fun. I took two tires there at the end cause it was, it was tight for me anyway. So it was a little bit too loose right away, but it seemed like when the fuel burned off, it was a little better, but it's still pretty loose, but got lucky. I had to hold my position off Dwayne there. I know he took four there, I guess. And, uh, good to get second. It was definitely good to get second. Uh, you talked about the close racing there out on that track, out on the track there tonight. Uh, it seemed like the trucks handled pretty well, uh, in traffic. Uh, it looked like, uh, everybody was able to, you know, e easily maintain the lines and, and, and keep those things pointed in the right direction. We had some great battles all over the racetrack. Talk about, uh, Texas as a track for these trucks and, and a way to finish out the season. It just seems to fit pretty good with these things. Yeah, it does. Uh, it, uh, it felt pretty good tonight. Like you said, it was a little tight, but, um, that that's why I figured taking the two tire stop was the way to go. Um, Chad there, man, I don't know. Uh, we were all racing behind him. I guess that was probably some of the reason for him kind of running off a little bit, but it doesn't matter. He was still seemed pretty fast, so I couldn't uh, hang with him, but it was good to get that second place finish. Absolutely was. You can carry this momentum into the off season, hopefully into the following season uh, and uh, get yourself up there. Uh, to battle for the championship next season. Uh, any sponsor shout-outs you want to give out here for tonight in the final race of the season? Uh, LSR TV, uh, do a great job. RSR, um, ITSR Racing, Hippie's Paint Shop. I guess i got to sn thank uh, Snap-on Tools tonight and this Toyota for getting second. Other than that, thanks to you guys. Well, we appreciate it, and we uh, congratulate you on finishing out the season in a second place finish here. So congratulations again. And uh, there he is, Ben. There's your second place finisher for tonight. And I believe you're in uh, victory lane. It's not often that you can talk to the champion of the series in victory lane on the final race because he also got the win. Well, tonight we're going to do just that. Chad Coleman first. We're going to talk about tonight. We'll get to the championship here in a couple minutes. What a great run. It seemed like once your truck hit clean there, my goodness, you were, it was just on, on a, on a, on a rail. Talk about it. Yeah. We, uh, sat there and rode in line for a little while and, uh, was out there on the two tires on like that second run or whatever it was, that long run that we got right there through the middle of the race and, you know, eventually went green. I had a truck get to the inside of me going in the one and I had to move my line up and, uh, I learned a lot from having to move that lineup, so I just I kept doing it the rest of the race. I could get huge runs off of one down the back and just keep it turning, and it uh it worked out nice. And then I was lucky to get out front before uh, everybody clustered up right there, and uh, that was pretty much all she wrote. I'm glad you mentioned you changing your line because we've seen it through all throughout the race. There were a couple different lines that came into play. Did you feel that? out front or even when you were in the pack did you feel how the dynamic track was really starting to take uh, effect in the later stages of that race yeah i mean this this is a the dynamic track thing's a huge success and a long line of failures for iRacing but they uh 
they seem to hit this one pretty good. And uh, like Texas, Texas, it starts it's off tight there. And then as the run goes, the track gets a little rubber in it and uh, it starts to loosen up. So you can take a tight setup and then it becomes really racy after, you know, you get a long run. And I was I was so glad to see that run go green for ever right there because you save the right front a little bit, get the car working on the right rear. And then after that, it's just drive it. You make it sound easy. I'm pretty sure it's not that easy. <laughs> Who do you want to thank for putting you in victory lane tonight? Well, first I'd like to thank Steve Herring, RSR, for putting on uh, putting on the races. This series is a lot of fun for us guys to stay up late on a Friday night. We ain't got nothing better to do in race. And uh, thank you guys for broadcasting and everybody back on TeamSpeak with uh, Josh Chen, Doy Woods, Harrison Wildlitz, J.D. Laird, Jordan Hightower, Byron Daly and uh, Pedro Mojica. He usually turns into the Texas Missile. I'm not sure what happened tonight, but uh, I think he was grounded. Sounds great. Uh, well, usually this would be where we'd send you off to the motorhome lot and let, and let you party down. But since you are the champion of the series, you got the championship wrapped up tonight. I'm going to hand it over to Steve Herring, and he's going to present you with the championship, Steve. Thank you. Uh, Chad, on behalf of all the admins uh, here at RSR, the drivers, uh, everyone in Midnight, associated with Midnight Thunder, I'd like to congratulate you on the uh, 2015 Season 4 uh, championship. It was well-deserved. Just an absolute uh, solid runs all season. You were the model of consistency with uh, two wins, seven top fives, and ten top tens. Uh, you just weren't. Uh, you just never missed a beat. Uh, it was well deserved, and congratulations. Yeah, thanks, Steve, and as always, thanks for uh, thanks for putting on the races for us, so we can show up and have a little fun. No problem. And and like in vir in uh, previous years, we've given out virtual checks with virtual trophies, but this uh, season's going to be a little bit different. Uh, I'd like to offer you a sponsorship into Outlaw Trucks, the new broadcast series on Wednesday nights, uh, for uh, under the Midnight Thunder logo. Uh, all expenses paid. Sounds great. Sounds like a plan. I'd like to do it. Well, there you have it. Jack Coleman going to be participating, hopefully going for a championship in the Outlaw Series, debuting here on a Wednesday night. Steve, while we have you around, let's talk about RSR for a little bit. Uh, we're going to take off for tonight, but you guys are going to be right back at it Monday night. Talk about the upcoming series and uh, the chase. It's finishing out on Monday nights. Yeah, the uh, the was well, the middle round is, is over with. Now we're going to the final uh, the final cut round and uh, with uh, Martinsville on Monday night. It has been probably the most competitive season in RSR uh, full throttle uh, full throttle cup. That I've been I've been associated with two th since 2012. This by far has been the most competitive uh, and heavily battled throughout the whole season. Uh, it's great to be partners now with LSR uh, for the what we call the Icebreaker Series on Monday after the Cup Series is over with, and the Outlaw Trucks. It's really really great. You guys do a great job, and uh, it was well deserved. You guys getting on iRacing uh, TV. Uh, you guys are probably the best in the business. Well, we certainly appreciate it, but uh, don't blow our heads up too big. We got to go back in the booth and uh, collect our stuff. <laughs> let's talk <laughs> about the uh, let's talk about the Outlaw Trunk Series. You guys blowing that up? That's going to be pretty fun. Tell us about uh, tell us what's going to go down. Uh, well, you got most of the guys from the Cup Series. Uh, it's already signed up over there, uh, so that's going to make it competitive. And you got a couple new guys, and looking at the ratings and things like that. Uh, it, this thing's up and up for air. You just uh, never know what's going to happen. Uh, a lot of wide open mile and a halfers, two mile tracks when with the super speedways, uh, you just never know what's going to happen. And with the trucks, as you already mentioned, with the new dynamic track surface, that I agree with Chad, this is something they finally got right. Uh, it's it's really really fun to drive these things now. Well, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a fun season coming up. Still got to finish out the chase. You talked about the icebreaker and the outlaw truck. It's going to be unbelievable the next couple of months over at RSR. Steve, thanks for putting it on, and thanks for having us on board. And thanks again for you guys at RSR TV. Uh, great job tonight. 
Steve Herring, one of the admins in the RSR Midnight Thunder series. Andy, let's go ahead and run the fans that are watching at home through the final finishing results from Texas tonight. Chad Coleman, champion and the race winner. He comes home, of course, in first place. Second was Scott Simley. Third goes to Dwayne Vincent. Fourth to E.J. O'Rourke. A great run. He started way back in 24th. Byron Daly rebounded for a top five finish. Richard Beasley started 19th. He comes home in sixth. Seventh to Doy Woods. Eighth, J.D. Laird. He started from the pole. Chad Cole, he comes home in ninth. And tenth was the number five of Dan Murray. Yeah, come, coming home 11th here tonight, a little bit trouble towards the end. The two tires didn't work for Joshua Chin. He'll finish 11th. 12th place from starting 31st was David Gibson. A good run for him. Jason Jason Swan finished 13th. 14th went to that 27 machine at Justin Laxton. Cody Gibson finished 15th. 16th went to Matt LaCrosse. Steve Herring finished 17th. 18th Aaron Bennett. 19th was Jordan Hightower, and Andre Rogers finished out in 20th. Hank Williams. <laughs> Hank Williams Ed or Ed Williams? Williams. <laughs> oh, wow. It's after midnight. Ed Williams Jr. <laughs> Halloween, Comes too. home Come 21st. That's he a great costume for him. Hank wear. Williams, yeah. Twenty <laughs> second was C.J. LeVert. Danny Sanchez was twenty third. Joe Hassard was twenty four, twenty fifth. Jason Pick. Pedro Mejica comes home in twenty sixth, twenty seventh to Doug Manning. Stephen Marinak comes home in twenty eighth, twenty ninth. Cody Vincent and Steve Ritter comes home in thirtieth. Rounding out the field here tonight in 31st place was Joey Gatana. Having some trouble early, finishes 67 laps down. Final thoughts from Texas Motor Speedway will begin with Tyler Herr. I thought it was a fantastic race tonight. Just real close side-by-side -side race, and you saw all the grooves come in, especially Byron Daly running all the way up against the wall. Just... I think it was a fantastic finish to this series. Gabe? Well, for me, the most exciting part of the race and most surprising was the fact, like the other guys were talking, the multi-groove racing. I was expecting a few guys to be able to make moves on the outside, a few of the more experienced guys who could control it. From the back half of the top five to the front half of the top 15, they were all just in there in the cluster. I seriously hope iRacing does not do anything to the setup of these cars because that was some great racing. Andy? Yes, it was. I can't reiterate it enough. Uh, like like these guys said here in their interviews, they actually hit on something and got it correct. Now, if if only we could get the green-white checkers and that be correct, it would be all set. But, uh, <laughs> hey, but we got movable cones. <laughs> yeah, we got movable cones, and we got cars and airplanes outside of Daytona. But anyway, uh no, fantastic race. These trucks always put on a good race. I love watching the trucks. doesn't matter what track they're at. Uh, Texas just seems to fit them, though. Uh, kind of a rough track, a worn-out track. Wears the tires out. They can run multiple grooves with the progressive banking. Uh, it's just a great show. And then, you, and then you throw into the mix of it, not just trucks. You throw in some of the best racers on sim uh, in these drivers at RSR, and, and it just puts on a great show and a great way to end the season. So uh, congratulations to uh, everybody uh, that participated in this season and uh, most definitely to the champion. You guys pretty much took the words out of my mouth. I can't wait to see how the chase unfolds Monday night in the RSR Full Throttle Cup Series. And then we're going to kick the Icebreaker and the Outlaw Trunk Series off here at RSR. We hope you join us tomorrow on our mainstream channel, LSR TV, for the Sarah Fall Brawl at Five Flag Speedway. Three races back to back back. It's another triple header tomorrow for the gang here at LSR TV. You can find post-race recaps, news, and other press for everything going on on LSR TV through our partners at Race Chaser Online at racechaseronline.com or in racing news at iracing.com forward slash iracing news. That's going to do it for us here tonight at Texas Motor Speedway for Cisco Scaramuza, Tyler Herr, 
Gabriel Wood and Andy Kessler. I am Ben Kilcrease. We will see you tomorrow night for the Fall Brawl. Good night, everybody. Happy Halloween. And remember, when you're out there on the roads, to put that phone down.